was a fun couple days off. Get some rest, check out all the action, and then right back to, but how does this affect the Leafs? I was on the phone with someone at Sportsnet talking about a video I wanted to do, talking about this and that. Mid phone call, this tweet drops. From Leafs PR, Brandon Shanahan, president and alternate governor of the Toronto Maple Leafs. First of all, thanks for clearing that up. I had no idea who Brendan Shanahan was. Brendan Shanahan, president and alternate governor of the Toronto Maple Leafs, announced today that Lou Lamorello will not return next season as general manager of the Maple Leafs. Now before we go any deeper into the story, can we talk about something? Stop rushing. I'm guilty of it too. You know what? News is exciting. And with the Leafs, it's extremely rare. I mean, they pretty much break all their own news. But for example, I see this tweet drop. Lou Lamorello will not be back as Leafs general manager. And I see people talking about how he got fired. No. Oh, so Kyle Dubas is the new GM. No. Well, not yet. Oh, are they going to bring in this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy? They haven't done anything. They've done literally nothing. They issued a press release. That's all they've done. Even Lou Lamorello not coming back as GM next year, it's hardly even an act. He was supposed to leave his post at this time. Contractually, he's supposed to stay on as an advisor for the next two years, which they mentioned. And I saw some other people talking about media hysteria. This is what they want. They want you to think this. This news was broken by the Leafs. And then the Leafs spoke to the media and gave them some context. That's it. It's about as mundane and run-of-the-mill as news gets. Man, it's not even May. You're going to want to pace yourself if you're going to survive. But enough about all that. What's going on here? I've been asked, do you think Lou not coming back is a bad thing? Is it a good thing? Here's a tweet from Chris Johnson to give you some context. Lou Lamorello on Kyle Dubas from July 23rd, 2015, the day he was hired by the Leafs. I think he's a young fellow who has tremendous abilities. I know of his background. And if he doesn't become the general manager here, and I'm not going to be here for a lifetime, it's going to be his fault. So is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? We don't have all the variables. We don't know if Kyle Kyle Dubas is the next Leafs GM. Brandon Shanahan was asked what he's going to do about that and if he's going to go external and basically he's going to consider all candidates. I read a lot of people going, well why don't they just announce it now? Well, Lou is still an advisor and one thing I've heard Elliot Friedman say that Lou Lamorello said, if you have time, use it. The Leafs should announce a new GM now. Why? For what? The draft is in over a month and a half. It's the second round of the playoffs and there's eight teams playing. And by the sounds of it, Lou's still there, Shanny's still there. There. Dubas is still there, Hunter's still there, Pridham's still there, the analytics staff is still there. All the same heads are in the same room, and they'll be arguing about signings and draft position and whatever as they always do, and it's possible that the power structure has changed a bit internally and they just haven't told us, but really, it's the same personalities involved. They don't need to tell us, which would be a very Leafs thing. There was one really good theory about why the Leafs might not have announced Dubas yet. From Heart of Lad, who covers the Toronto Marlies, have to think the Marlies winning in round one was a fact in not announcing a replacement for Lou at the same time as today's. Not the sole reason, but if it's going to be Dubas, him being announced on the same day would be cool. So again, even if Lou is not in charge, his influence is all over this team, which is what he was brought here for three years ago anyway. Kyle Dubas is the general manager of the Toronto Marlies. The Toronto Marlies are still on the Calder Cup playoffs. Their season is not done. I don't really know why they would think of it like this, but maybe they don't want to pull focus from the Marlies mid-playoff run. I know, I think it's silly too but that would be a very Lou way of thinking, wouldn't it? I'll do a deeper, in-depth dive of all the things Lou Lamorello did as Leafs GM, but I, I was surprised looking at his NHL trade tracker page. Not including pick-for-pick -pick deals at the draft, like the Leafs giving up a late first-rounder for two seconds, something like that. Lou Lamorello made 19 trades as Leafs GM. His first one was September 17, 2015, when he traded five people to the New York Islanders for Michael Grabner, then Richard Panik for Jeremy Morin, which was not not good. And then he traded Dion Phaneuf to the Ottawa Senators. Lou's first three trades as Leafs GM combined saw six players come into the organization as well as one second round draft pick and 11 players leaving. And one of the six players the Leafs got was Jared Cowan and I don't even know if they gave him a jersey. So he freed up roster spots by going everyone get out. And then in the coming weeks and months of winter 2016 he took on a lot of garbage contracts from teams. Got a boatload of picks. Got the team's starting goalie in Freddie Anderson. Ho-hum won the draft lottery and got Austin Matthews, and then saw the team he was GM of go to two straight playoff appearances. Now, we can talk about this more when Kyle Dubas is actually announced, but 
I think this is the perfect summer to bring in, if not him, at very least somebody different. Nylander needs a contract. Marner and Matthews can sign contract extensions. Facing the prospect of losing all three of JVR, Bozak, and Komarov, particularly JVR, you're looking at a very significant change to the team. Not in terms of names, but in terms of structure, how this team plays the game. If you're going to give someone else the keys, now's the time. But we got a couple months to discuss that. There's talk of Lula Amarillo potentially going to the New York Islanders. I hope he doesn't do that. One, I think Lula Amarillo is pretty good at his job, and the New York Islanders are in the Eastern Conference, and I don't want another Eastern Conference team getting stronger. Two, Lou, if you screw up the Leafs getting Tavares, so help me. Three, you're 75, dude. You got a good thing going. Keep it going. This is the perfect way to go out, in my biased Leafs opinion. Wrapping it up, to me, it'd be much more concerning if the Leafs said, we're bringing Lou back. The plan has been for Lou to step aside as the GM at this time for a long time. If that plan changed, I'd have to be like, uh oh, what happened? Moving on to a team that Kyle Dubas is definitely the GM of, the Toronto Marlies. The Marlies win game five over the Utica Comets in their best of five series. It's best of five in the first round of the AHL playoffs. And move on to the second round. I actually went to this game. It was uh, super concerning that the series even made it to a fifth game because the Marlies are really good. But for game five, an already pretty stacked Marlies squad got Andreas Janssen and Travis Dermott back, and it just wasn't a contest. The Marlies outshot them all game. Janssen looked dominant. Dermott looked dominant. Utica got a bunch of really good scoring chances at the beginning, including one incredible save from Garrett Sparks. He loses his blocker after the save, and then puts up his hand to stop the puck barehanded. That is what we call a gamer, folks. And also, a lunatic. Carl Grundstrom had an excellent game for the Marlies, scoring their first and second goals of the game. The first was a power play goal, the second wasn't, it just looked like it. <laughs> Grundstrom is listed at 6 foot 194 pounds on the Marlies website, but I don't know. He's still only 20, he's got this thick, beastly body. He's gonna truck guys one day. He's already got snarl and just a nose from the net and banging in goals. Andreas Janssen assisted on both Grundstrom goals, one primary, one secondary before blasting in a power play marker of his own less than a minute into the third. That went on the power play and set up by Travis Dermott. Be still my beating heart. Dimitro Temeshov adds the empty netter. Garrett Sparks gets the shutout. Bob's your uncle. The Marlies head on to the second round where they will face the Tampa Bay Lightning's affiliate, the Syracuse Crunch. Leaves for his lightning the way it should have been. It's just one game, but here are some takeaways. A lot of people seem to think that Grundstrom is going to make the team right away next year. I'm skeptical. He looks real good and he's been putting up great numbers. He even put up good numbers last year, but the Leafs seem to like how having guys like kind of indoctrinated into their system over time. But you never know, Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews worked out pretty good. Janssen was dominant in the AHL all season long, but he did look at another level. Dermott, a little sloppy at times, and he did take a penalty, but overall, he looked dominant. Almost looked like he had to adjust back down. And that's what you expect from your guys who, those guys should both walk on to the NHL team next year. Your clear-cut NHL players should look like they are past the AHL, and both of those guys do. By the way, the Swedish connection on the Marlies is lethal. Janssen and Grundstrom are monsters up front who I've already mentioned. <gasps> Pierre Engvall. He's still only 21, and after 20 points in 31 games in the top division in Sweden, which is good, he came over and got 8 points in 9 games in the AHL, which is good. Went to the playoffs, so far, 3 points in 5 games. Good. He's either 6'3 or 6'4, depending on which site you ask. The Marley's official site says 6'4, and a buck 90, room to grow. He's getting me stupid excited. And the other Swede, how could you forget Timothy Lilligren? The answer is you can't. He looked very good. Not dominant, but good and steady. And speaking of Swedes, one more Swede we should mention. We got some breaking news. Chris Johnson from Sportsnet quote tweeted an article from Ufi Bowden. He is the editor-in-chief slash chef redactor, which I believe to be a lesser-known dinosaur discovered in 19th century Scandinavia. For hockey's ver... Ho a publication in Sweden, Par Lindholm, to sign with the Leafs, according to Ufe. The 26-year-old center received considerable NHL interest after a near point-per-game season with Skelleftia. So if you couldn't already tell from what I said about Pierre Engvall, it's hard to score in Sweden. In this season, Par Lindholm did that at almost a point-per-game pace. 18 goals, 29 assists for 47 points in 49 games. That's reason to get excited if you're a Leafs fan. Reason to maybe dampen your excitement. He was second on his team in scoring 
only behind Leafs legend Joachim Lidstrom. This is on HockeyDB.com. If you're like, hmm, I've heard that name before, yes, the Leafs got him from the St. Louis Blues along with a sixth round pick in exchange for the Leafs giving the Blues Ole Jokin. That trade was just over three years ago, so you just go ahead and remember that the next time you get sad about how the Leafs just did. Oh, times used to be bad. So, is Par Lindholm going to make the Leafs next year? Uh, who knows? Babcock never quite seemed to take a liking to Miro Altonen, who had a great season with the Marlies, by the way. Lindholm is about the same height and ever so slightly heavier, but what he is, however, is a failsafe. He's depth at center, which the Leafs do not have. Obviously, Matthews, Kadri, but then Bozak, free agent, Placanitz, free agent, Moore, free agent, Freddie Gauthier, Miro Altonen, like I mentioned, Chris Mueller, who was good for the Marlies, but is 31, and Adam Brooks, who's probably a few years away. It sounds like Lindholm had other NHL offers, and he chose the Leafs. That's great news. Especially after a season where the Leafs bring in Swedes like Callie Rosen and Andreas Borgman. They keep Borgman, then send them down halfway through the season. Rosen barely played with the Leafs at all. I was worried that might deter guys exactly like Par Lindholm, and apparently it didn't. It's nice depth, and that's nice, but let's not look at it as anything other than that until we're given reason to. Ah, and that wraps up my first video since the last LFR of the season. Huh. I know it wasn't very long, but I missed you. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more Leaf stuff, though. I'm going to be doing more. There's a lot of questions, and I got something to say, and I'm not going to tell you exactly what it's about, but it's about Jake Gardner. Wait, you'll see. So, the comment box is down below. You know what to do with it. What do you think about the fact that Lou Lamorello will no longer be the Leafs general manager? And what do you think about the Marlies? What do you think about Lindholm? That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. One of these buttons is going to lead you to merch if, if you want to go ahead and buy that. And I'll see you later. Soon. I'll see you sooner. Apparently I already forgot how to do this.